Are we ready to start? Yep, go right ahead. All right. Welcome everybody uh, to another Juma. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah, wa nasmad wa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'uzu billah min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina. Wa may yahdihi Allah fala mudilla la wa may yudhillahu fala hadiya la. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tuqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal nas attaqu rabbukum alazhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a wa attaqullahi alazhi tusa'aluna bihi wal arham inna allaha kana alaykum rakiba. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tuqullaha wa kulu kawlan sadida yuslih lakum amalakum wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum my dear brothers and sisters, all thanks and praise belong to Allah. We seek his help and forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whosoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. O oh, you have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. And O oh, you have believed, Fear your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed both of them, many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you ask one another. And oh, you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will then amend for you your deeds and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great attainment. My dear brothers and sisters, it's always a reminder for me these verses in the beginning of the Quran because it reminds at least for myself, I will speak, reminds me that we should always find ways to reconnect with Allah because at the end of the day, the guidance, the knowledge that we receive comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, you know, today we'll talk about some of that. One of the, the names of Allah I'm going to talk about today is al Alim, which is the most knowledgeable. Uh, but we started this series. We're now continuing along talking about the names of Allah and seeing how we can actually apply these names or these virtuous names within our own lives. And that's important for us to connect with Allah. Because each one of these qualities emulate one of the attributes that we should be implementing within our lives. Now, obviously we'll never be able to perfect any of these attributes, but inshallah with practice, with perseverance, we should be able to at least start um, having that sense about our creator. The last time we met, we talked about three of the names. We talked about Al-Ghafar, Al-Qahar, and Al-Wahhab. And today, We'll talk about the next three names right after those, which is Al-Razak, Al-Fatah, and Al-Alim. I hope through the work that I'm doing at this time, you will uh, hopefully benefit and you will find information that will help you, inshallah, gain a better understanding about our creator. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Razak, the provider. He is the one who creates the means for sustenance, not just for our outer self, but also for our inner self. And those are the two ways in which sustenance is provided to us. So if you think about uh, you know, food that we go pick up from the grocery store, from the fields out there, that is sustenance for us to feed our body. And if we think about rain, for instance, rain is sustenance that Allah provides to soak the soil where all kinds of fruits and vegetables can grow, to give us water in the rivers and uh, the ocean so that we can actually use this water for our benefit you know, electricity can be generated today as well using some of this ocean water. Uh, and similarly, through rivers, we consume water, which our body needs in order to just sustain itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of all sustainers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nourishes not just the visible, but also the non-visible. So if we think about the inner nourishment that happens, the, we can see one of those nourishments, for example, our brain. So the knowledge that we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nourishes our minds, nourishes the information that we can then receive and use that information then in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also nourishes our soul. So if we think about, uh, you know, what happens when we leave this body, that information about the hereafter, that information that connects us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also coming to us in the form of nourishment. So Al-Razak is a nourisher. And from a linguistic point of view, there's three letters in Al-Razak, Ra, uh, za and ka. And you pronounce it as a risk. And typically people associate risk with the 
um, you know, the, the monetary, the money that we earn in our life or the income that we earn, but it means many more things. So what is risk? It's all things we need to survive in this world. It's not just the money. It's also the rain, for example. It's also, um, you know, having sustenance from the fruits and vegetables and the animals that we receive for our consumption. Now, rain specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions as uh, in Surah Ghafir in verse 13, he is the one who shows you his signs and sends down rain as a provision for you from the sky. But none will be mindful except those who turn to him. And that's a great reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about all the signs that surround us. Even in the raindrops, the tiny raindrops that we experience when it rains outside, there's a sign, there's something we can learn from this. And it's an invitation from Allah to say, you know what? Turn to me, remember me, even when it's raining outside, even from the, the power that rain has, that's a sign of knowledge for you. So it's not just the nourishment for our environment, it's also the knowledge that we can gain from it. So just this, um, you know, just this, this power that Allah has given, this ability of Allah to just use multiple different things and everything in our environment is a source of nourishment for us. And the best provider of all of them is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And risk doesn't just stop there. You know, it also comes in the way of uh, you know, peace of mind, our personal security, the good manners that we project out into our community as well as our peers, and the spiritual enlightenment. enlightenment. All of that is nourishment for us to benefit from. Now, reflecting on this relationship between outer and inner nourishment, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making sure that we as human beings have the ability to sustain ourselves, not just physically in this world, but also in the hereafter. And our bodies are the vehicles through which our souls travel. And that, that energy within us, that ability to nourish that energy, all of that is being transferred to us through our environment. The work that we do on ourselves is very important because we have to make sure that we're constantly going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and making sure that we're reconnecting. So this interplay between inner and outer nourishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us is itself a source for us to learn from. And we're reminded in Surah Dhariyat, Inna Allaha huwa razaqul quwwatul mateen. Indeed, Allah alone is the supreme provider, Lord of all power, ever mighty. Everything we enjoy, everything we gain from the nourishment of Allah. And he chooses who he gives. As mentioned in Surah Shura, riska He gives abundant or limited provisions to whoever he wills. There's a story about an interaction between Hatim al Assam, who was a, a scholar of Islam and had a, just an immense passion for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a man that was asking him questions. So this man passes by and asks Hatim, you know, from where do you eat? And he says, from Allah's storehouse. And the man responds back, does he send you sustenance from heaven? And to that, Hatim replied, you know, were the earth not his, he would have handed it down from the heaven. And to which the man responded, what words you people speak of? And Hatim responded by saying, that is because nothing descends from heaven except words. And the man concedes at the end of that argument saying, I am not strong enough to dispute with you. So to that, Hatim says, that is because falsehood cannot prevail over truth. Now I share this story with you because it's a, it's a reflection for us to look at the way uh, you know, this one person, this philosopher, Islamic scholar is looking at uh, his relationship with the earth and the heavens. And it says, you know, Allah has created the heaven, Allah has created the earth that's around us and it's providing us nourishment. And if none of that nourishment existed here, without a doubt, Allah would have been sending the nourishment to us through heavens. And the Quran is a revelation that comes to us from the heavens. So just the words alone is powerful to sustain us, not just in this world, but in the hereafter. One other point I want to make about uh, risk and al-Razak is everything that we're given, everything that we take as provision is a means of a test for us. You know, okay, so this world is, is full of provisions everywhere we look, you know, both halal and haram. And on the day of judgment, as a reminder to myself and then to you is that we will be accountable for the provisions we consume, whether good or bad or indifferent, we will be held to account from it. Um, so, you know, how we earn our living, for example, um, how we use the provisions we have to help those who are a little less fortunate than us and just, you know, making sure that our neighbors and our friends and our community members are taken care of. That also is one of the utilities of the provisions. Just a reminder for us to say, 
you know, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this opportunity to not just consume provisions, but also give it back to our community. And we're reminded in, in uh, Surah Nur, wa aqimu salata, wa atu zakata, wa atiyo rasula, la lakum turhamun. Moreover, establish prayer, pay alms tax, and obey the messenger so you may be shown mercy. So just a reminder, since we're just getting out of, uh, you know, the month of Ramadan, just to just remind ourselves to continue on that mission, continue on that, that uh, connection with Allah in, in the giving that we do, also in the establishment of the prayer that we, that we have, you know, trained ourselves to do over the last 30 days. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also al-fatah, the opener. He is the one who opens that which is closed and reveals that which is unknown to us or is unclear. So if you ever find ourselves in a situation where we don't quite understand a problem or we don't know why things are happening the way they are, we should always remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might be testing us. And ultimately, he will reveal to us what is it, what is the solution to that? What is it that we need to do? And he's the one who makes things easy for us, especially when we are facing with personal difficulties or even difficulties as a community. From a linguistic point of view, again, the three letters is fa, ta, and ha in al fata which has the meanings of to unlock or open, reveal or make clear, uh, also to make victorious and be the best judge or to grant or permit or allow something from, uh, to happen. Uh, thinking about the Prophet Sallallahu you know, when he was granted victory in Makkah, it was all because of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the victory of the Battle of Badr when the Muslims were outnumbered was also because of the grace of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he's the one who gives victory to whoever he wills. And this is mentioned in Surah Al Imran, verse 123. Indeed, Allah made you victorious at Badr when you were vastly outnumbered. So be mindful of Allah. Perhaps you will be grateful. And as the story goes, Allah sends a, an army of angels to help uh, the Prophet and his companions at that time to just overwhelm the Quraysh during the Battle of Badr. And there should be no doubts in our believing hearts that the source of victory is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. As it's mentioned in Surah Al Anfar, uh, "Woman nasra illa min in the law." Victory comes only from Allah. And nothing in this universe, my dear brothers and sisters, exists without the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And we see the signs of Allah all around us. You know, the revelation of Quran is probably one of the more powerful examples. Is a sign that you know there is an existence out there that is far superior and is the creator of all of these things, and that is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And by existence. If we believe in the Quran, we also must believe that there is a day of judgment. And on that day, we will all be judged. Regardless whether we are Muslims or not, every single human on this planet will be judged in the jinn as well. And the Quran was not revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the Prophet was ready to receive it. So there's actually a, a timing thing here where you know, Allah will open doors for us or unlock knowledge for us specifically when the time is right. Okay, so reflecting on that for a little bit, we have to understand that um, the opening or opportunities or, or Allah, you know, testing and then not testing, all of those things are predicated on when you're ready. And Allah doesn't just say, okay, I'm going to throw a thousand difficulties towards you. No more than what we can handle is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will challenge us with. And similarly, you know, if we find ourselves in a situation where we, we don't know when something will end, eventually we must understand that there's a time to all of these things. You know, the day of judgment isn't just going to drop on us right now. Allah knows when that predetermined time is. And when that time arrives, then it will happen. As far as revelations go, you know, once the Prophet was ready, Gabriel, Jibreel salam, was sent to guard these verses, bring it down to the Prophet salam, And then, you know, eventually we are revealed this complete book called the Quran, which is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, Allah mentioned this very clearly in the Quran. Inna fi zalika li rahmatan wa zikra li yu'minin. Surely in this Quran is a mercy and reminder for people who believe. And you can find this verse in Surah An Kabu, verse 51. Nobody's more merciful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody. And among the names of Allah, Al Rahim, the bestower of mercy, and Al Ghafar, which we talked about last uh, time, was the all forgiving, all merciful. And the source of the Quran is the same source as the creator of the universe and every creation that exists within it. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to shower his mercy, there's nothing anyone can do about it. You can't even stop it. And this is explicitly called out in the Quran as well in Surah Fatir, 
whatever mercy Allah opens up for people, none can withhold it. And whatever he withholds, none but him can release it. For he is the almighty, all wise. And you can find this in Surah Fatir, verse number two. And if you think about the day of judgment, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah promises the hellfire and paradise as a destination. Those who were transgressors in this life will find themselves in the hellfire. And those who were righteous will find themselves in paradise. And there's no doubt that we will all one day return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even reminds us in the Quran that, you know, if Allah wanted to judge us right there the moment we did something wrong, the world would have been empty. So Allah gives us that opportunity to come back to Allah. Just return to Allah. You did something wrong. Yep, that's fine. Just return back to Allah. Find that connection. Find that, that rope back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can be forgiven on the day of judgment. And where we end up in Allah's kingdom depends on how we spend this life on earth. And inshallah, khair, we will all spend our lives uh, making sure that we, we live it with the best possible of intent and the best possible of actions. I mean, and on the day of judgment, when the angel Israfil will be asked to blow the horn and announce the last day, everything at that time will cease to exist in an instant. Every human being will then be brought back to life so that they can be asked about what they did on this earth. And the angels who are recording our deeds, my brothers and sisters, are perfectly recording every single second of our lives. Every single thought that we acted upon will be preserved in this record. And then we'll be asked about how we spent our youth, how well we guarded our salah, uh, our body parts will speak against us and bear witness, our tongue will bear witness, our skin will bear witness, and so on. And those who are righteous will be delighted because they will be victorious on that day. And victory, again, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always greater than his punishment. So Allah always reminds us that he is the most compassionate, most merciful. You know, we can spend an entire life in, in rebellion. And, and the promise of Allah is that the hellfire is, is not one of the places you want to be. I mean, the description within the Quran is so very vivid. You know, when you read about the description of the hellfire, and this is a promise Allah makes, you know, one of the places in Surah Ibrahim, verse 29, Allah says, um, in hell they will burn. What an evil place for settlement. This is the promise Allah is making to those who transgress and, and choose to remain in that state of transgression against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the knowledge about us is something that Allah will will know about, Allah knows about, and it's constantly being recording. And Allah is also Al-Alim, the omniscient, omniscient, the all-knowing. Nothing that goes on in the universe, absolutely nothing that Allah doesn't have knowledge about. And his knowledge is infinite. His knowledge is inception and his knowledge is outcome. His knowledge manifests itself in his creation. So if you think about knowledge, Knowledge has to come from some source, and that source is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just going back to the linguistic piece of it again, you know, al-alim comes from the root words of a, lam, and mean, which means to be cognizant, to be aware, to be thoroughly informed. Now, as humankind, as human beings, we actually have a share in this particular attribute. You know, as people, we have the ability to receive knowledge. We also have the ability to apply knowledge. However, the knowledge that we have and the knowledge that we are able to act upon is different from the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, has. So let me use an analogy here for a moment. If you think about the game of chess, complex game, lots of different rules. Once you've mastered, it takes you know, many, many uh, games of practice before you can truly just really own this game. The person who invented chess knows about all the rules in chess because that person came before the game of chess. Now. I don't know who the inventor of chess is, but I can tell you that it would have been a fairly complex mind to be able to come up with some of these rules. And the rules didn't exist until this person manifested themselves in the form of this game called chess. And as we start learning this game, as we start practicing the game, we are actually deriving the knowledge of this game from the person who created this game. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes before any single creation in this universe. Everything that exists in this universe today is drawing that knowledge, is drawing information about itself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all knowledge that exists 
out there in the universe, including ourselves. You know, we don't just learn out of the ether. We actually have to go mine for this knowledge. We have to go get this knowledge either from the people we interact with, from the observations that we make out there in the real world, uh, or reading books that might have been published. But all of that knowledge didn't just materialize in our mind. We didn't just wake up one day and just decided the universe's knowledge is going to start pouring into our mind and we're just going to start understanding every single thing without actually um, interacting with anybody. So all the knowledge that we have, that we are able to apply, is only a small and limited subset of the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses and the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to create. Our expertise, super small, small, small subset. How small? Probably could not measure it. But if we're able to engage and we're able to learn from this knowledge, then we start benefiting from the nourishment that Allah is giving our minds. The Quran didn't just come into existence because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala received it and then says, okay, I'm gonna pass it along now to these, these people on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of this knowledge that lives in the Quran. And then Allah passes it along through the angels to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, in Surah Yusuf, verse 2, Allah mentions, Indeed, we have sent it down, this is a Quran, an Arabic Quran, so that you may understand. What we observe from this verse, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, while reflecting on, is that Allah is creating the verses in the Quran, sending them down. But he's also sending it down very specifically to the Arabs in a language called Arabic. Now, by extension, when Allah says sending it to uh, the Arabs, we're also talking about the, the rest of humanity. The medium of communication is important here. Allah is sending it down in Arabic. And that is what was needed for the people who are receiving this information because they needed a discoverable medium by which they can communicate. And the Arabic language is a very rich source of that and also the common tongue. Uh, now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have sent it in English if those people who were living in uh, the Arab, in Arabia at that time were speaking English. So there's, there's no language that Allah is you know, oblivious to. Every single thing that Allah does is with purpose. And the Arabic just happens to be a very rich source of knowledge. Uh, you can mine it. If you speak Arabic and you study Arabic, you can mine it you know, for a long time and come up with all these different uh, meanings that uh, relate to the emphasis even within the language. So the Quraysh speaking Arabic is the reason why the Quran comes to us in the language of Arabic. Now, all of the knowledge that we derive, my dear brothers and sisters, is something that we should try and apply for good. You know, again, like I said earlier, all the provisions that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to us uh, for us to use, for us to spend within this world. Everything within this world is going to end at some point. And, and then we will be asked about what we do. So inshallah, I'll conclude this khutbah in the second half. وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلَمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah, be exalted and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah. Peace be upon him. My dear respected brothers and sisters, today I briefly touched on three of the beautiful names of Allah. Al-Razaq, Al-Fatah, and al -Abi. Uh, and as I said, you know, we should always strive uh, to emulate these characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because by emulating these attributes of Allah, we try and connect ourselves. We try and see what that feels like. And, it, and all of these names, all of these qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala evoke emotion within us. And it is that emotion that, you know, drives us as human beings. You know, we are creatures of emotion. There's a, there's a range of emotion that everybody will display you know, publicly. However, we all have emotion. And these qualities of Allah evoke the best of emotions within us. So it's important for us to be cognizant about what they mean and try and, and be generous in, in its application wherever we can. So on that point, I just wanted to share some general thoughts uh, about these attributes and how we can uh, apply them in ourselves. Uh, these are just reminders for myself first, inshallah, and hopefully you find benefit from them. So one of the ways that we can emulate this is just have a strong desire to learn. Uh, you know, I, I keep 
um, I, I like this analogy of, you know, curiosity is a state of mind. Curiosity is not something that you just turn on and off. And Allah loves knowledge. And Allah also loves and elevates those who possess knowledge. So it's important for us to always just maintain this curious state of mind, you know, especially when it comes to learning. You know, spend some time learning about Islam, spend some time learning about the Quran, dedicating maybe a small portion of our day or even, uh, you know, one day, one portion of our week to building our knowledge about our deen so that we can find ourselves, we can find our hearts, inshallah, connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, just like the honeybees are drawn to pollen and flowers, we should be drawn to our creator, uh, and hopefully more times during the week than not. Uh, secondly, we should always remain humble. Once we gain knowledge, it's very easy for us to feel a sense of arrogance, a sense of um, pride. And those are things that are not good for us either in this world or the hereafter. So we should find ourselves to, you know, remind ourselves that remain humble. You know, knowledge should not be a source of pride for us. You know, we should seek that knowledge. However, we should use that knowledge for the benefit of, uh, you know, our communities, our friends and family. And, and just make sure that we don't find ourselves in this cycle where because we've become knowledgeable, other people now admire us for what we uh, possess because that, will lead to other diseases of the heart that we don't ever want to find ourselves in. So it's very important that we are cognizant about being humble. Uh, thirdly, we should always praise, place our trust in uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the best judge of all. If we ever find ourselves, for example, in an argument, let's make sure that we remind ourselves that, you know, even though our emotions might be running high at that moment, find a way to be just, find a way to be the best judge or how do we make sure that we don't put the other person in a difficult situation just because of the way we're feeling? Because a lot of times, uh, you know, when, when heated conversations escalate, uh, it's, it's very regretful sometimes what we, uh, you know, would think about and how we might have behaved at that time. So it's important we just remind ourselves about that. Uh, lastly, find contentment, be happy with what we have. And that sometimes can be very hard to do because in our minds, we're always thinking, you know, especially when you know, we're going to work or, or we're trying to build a business, whatever the case may be, our risk is usually telling us, okay, you know, I want to be, I want more, I want more, I want more. And that's just human nature, always wanting more in this dunya for themselves. So we must always remind ourselves, find gratitude in what we have and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, just waking up in the morning uh, even be, uh, should be a, a reason for us to thank Allah because we're waking up. Uh, you know, sleep is the twin brother of death. And that's something that we should remind ourselves uh, on a daily basis because Allah will test us. The moment we wake up and how we spend our day and what actions we take, those will be ways in which we will be asked about on the day of judgment. You know, and this world is temporary, my great brothers and sisters. It's a place that will come to an end at some point. So we must always remind ourselves to be grateful in this world. Uh, and with that, you know, I hope you find benefit uh, from from these uh, little reminders, uh, I'm a seeker of knowledge, like you are, and you know, may Allah forgive me for any mistakes that I may have made here today. But let us all pray that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala guides our hearts toward Him, uh, because that to me is is very important. You know, we don't want our hearts and our souls to be cold and and dead uh, away from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And may we all find inside our hearts the strength to stay firm in the path of Allah, and may Allah forgive our shortcomings. And He Subhanahu wa Taala is the most merciful, the most forgiving. O Allah, when we stray, please forgive us and allow us to return back to guidance and the path that you have prescribed for those who believed in you. And O Allah, please improve us in character so that we may become better version of ourselves. And please have mercy upon our parents and pardon our transgressions and shortcomings. And please have mercy upon us on the day of judgment and keep us away from the torments of the grave and the hellfire. And please allow us to live a dignified life in this world and the hereafter. And please guard our health and the health of those who we love and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to our community members. Rabbana la tuzikh kalubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmatan innaka antal wahhab. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhlati hasana wa kina azab al-nar. Rabbana faqfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayi atina wa tuwafana ma al-abrar. Allahumma innaka afun tuhibu lafa fafu anni. اللهم إنك عفو تهب لفا فاخو عني رب الحمهما كما رب بياني صغيرة إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء إذ القربة وينحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعزكم لعلكم تذكرون 
Koskuruni, Koskurukum, Washkuruli, Walata Koron. I mean, my dear brothers and sisters, this time I'd like to conclude this khutbah. And to all of you, I wish a blessed Jumaat.